We are going to talk about barriers to entry now, and this is one of the most important concepts when you're choosing an effective market that you can go into and compete, so really pay attention. Now, if you are a beginner, basically a barrier to entry just means, uh, just to think of it literally, how hard is it to get in to a market, okay? And now there are all sorts of barriers to entry, and each one of them is a different type. Now, is a barrier to entry a good or a bad thing? That's, that's what we're gonna cover in this video, and then what are the types? Now I'm gonna talk about each one individually. So capital required. This is a big uh, barrier to entry because it's probably why a lot of you aren't pursuing markets, okay? Now, uh, my, some of my higher level friends, they like barriers to entry, okay? This is a case where barriers to entries are good because you guys can't, like the new people, they can't go and compete on something. So he only sources products that are over $50 each because he knows it's there's only a couple people that have the money to do that. Now, I personally, uh, with my products, I'm going for like two to $3 million product a year products. Now, I know that to, to uh, get that type of revenue and everything on what I'm focused on, there's only a couple of people that can really compete with it. So I'm completely uh, happy with doing it. And I'm even okay taking a lower margin on it because I know that barely anybody has the capital to do that and is willing to take as low of a margin because I'm building out my brand, okay? Now, um, here's another barrier to entry. If I have a brand, this is not here. So if I have my brand, of my personal development brand, uh, or whatever, uh, and I am able to sell my products at break even or a loss because I know that I can get people onto my application, my software application, or to come check out my YouTube channel or to do something else. I now have all of these different um, pyramids or uh, these pillars up here that uh, uh, my the lifetime value of my customer is higher when spread across everywhere. So. I can lose money on a loss leader like that. Um, so that is one barrier to entry. And you'll see a lot of businesses actually will lose money, like grocery stores lose money to get you in the door because they know they're going to make money on the back end of it. Yeah, that 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 could be another barrier to entry is just somebody selling at break even because they're just, they want to build that relationship with people. Um, and then also the capital. Now size and logistics. So some products are so large that you can't ship them affordably through Amazon. Now I was going to import a, uh, my, my mentor and I, we we're gonna import massage chairs because they're huge. They're giant and they're heavy. And we had we couldn't ship them through Amazon. We literally had to ship them through, uh, we had to get a 3PL, so that is a third party logistics company. And then we would have to sell them on LTL, which is, le um, I can't remember it off the top of my head right now, but uh, less than a truckload. So. That means like a, a, a specific truck would have to go out and deliver this. And can you imagine the returns or a broken massage chair? We literally would have to get a whole warehouse, get a whole uh, support team and everything to deal with these chairs and, and whatnot. And it was very profitable. And we, but, but here's uh, the flip side of that. We decided not to do it because it was a headache. And we said, let's just make money some other way. And I was like, yeah, I, I don't even want to just be sourcing stuff just for money. So that is, that's what happened. But here's the thing. There was no innovation. There's no innovation in the massage chair industry because it's, there's a lot of capital, a lot of capital required and it's huge. Like these things are really difficult to ship. So when there is a lot of barriers to entry, there's no innovation. That's cool though. Just like in my market, so with my solar eclipse goggles, there was no innovation in the goggle or in, in the glasses because it happens once, that's another one down there, so that's seasonality, okay? When it's something that's not happening very often, uh, there's just people, that it's, there's not a constant force of change in the market to, 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 to make the next big thing come. It comes and it goes. So um, I was able to innovate with the goggles and that killed. So that was awesome. Now here's another one. If there is a certification that's necessary, some people look at it and be like, ah, I don't want to do that. Let's just, let me get something that I could just source in an hour. You know, all right, uh, liability. If you get sued, this me specifically, I wanted to import LED lights more than you can imagine. Literally, I my passion is lights. I, I built some really cool light inventions, but that I just could not find a supplier that I trusted. And it only takes one 
burn down apartment to completely take away everything that you made. So I wasn't able to do that. So liability will be something that will deter you and uh, certifications. So another one is customer support. Like I said, with that, uh, with specifically with tech products, also food, food and health products, you'll get a lot of customer support. So just the more support and hassle there is with something, people are gonna be less likely to go into it. Here's another one. So this one is bundles. Uh, so assembly of multiple manufacturers, okay? So if you are putting together a bundle, now you find multiple manufacturers, and you get them to ship it. So you ship it all to your main manufacturer who assembles, packages it, and ships it to Amazon for you. Now, not other people can't just go on Alibaba and buy your bundle, okay? It doesn't work like that. They have to go out and do that extra work themselves. And because that takes extra work and time, they're probably gonna be lazy and not do it. So that's another way to create a barrier to entry. So like we talked about uh, barriers to entry is good or bad, it depends. You want barriers to entry when you're in a market and to get into a market, you don't want them, but you will when you get into it. So lastly, uh, coming closing up here, creativity or added value through design. So my solar eclipse glasses, I had the best design for specific subsets, specifically women and children. Now, it didn't matter that the other ones were, they looked kind of like mine, but mine just had the best design. So sometimes, look at art or whatnot like it's different for each person and the value is in the design it's not in the product like the product could be the same but the design why do people some people buy certain brands t-shirts other ones that i mean there's brand affiliation but certain times it's just god that's a good design and i want it like art is the best description there and there are products that have aesthetic feeling so the, the main point of that is aesthetics there is a, a big difference of aesthetics and utility okay are people purchasing for utility or are they purchasing for aesthetics now that's that's something to take into account now seasonality in, inventory forecast we talked about that but just lastly uh, a lot of people won't do it because one it's hard to find barrier to entry is how do you know what seasonal products are going to sell the best how do you know exactly how much to buy and sell you don't want to be stuck with it for a year so that is where i suggest a lot of people go but not if you're a beginner because you don't want to mess up your first product and then be stuck with it for a year. But then on the flip side, that's why people don't do it. So I don't know. I did it. It worked for me. Go see the seasonal section if you're wondering about that. All right. So change in consumer taste. I'm actually going to consider this a competitive advantage and not a barrier to entry. But you could call it a barrier to entry from somebody else. Uh, it's a barrier to entry for you. Uh, for others, because you have the ability to uh, your competitive advantage of catching trends or something and whatnot, uh, that would be like that. So this is the list of barriers to entry. You want them when you're in a market, you want them so that it doesn't get oversaturated. Typically, the more barriers of entry that stack on top, the less innovation and the more margin and the more opportunity, but it's also harder. So take that into account. Yeah, it's kind of the risk reward. Everything in life, the more work you have to do or put in, typically the greater the reward. So I want everybody to just take into account barriers to entry. They are very important in my opinion because they are where most people quit, okay? Uh, so if you can get over these barriers to entry, that is where I see the greatest success. I mean, if you look at my Eclipse example, we had seasonality, we had capital, uh, what else did we have? We had a liability, we had certification, we had uh, the just logistics, and we had creativity or added value through design, as well as a change in consumer taste. And I also had the assembly of multiple manufacturers. I had to create certain products, like literally we invented them. We had to get stuff from Germany and we had to get stuff from China and then pre assemble them and build the packaging in the United States. So I literally had we're just looking at this list, everything against me. Well, everything for me, if you look at it like that. And that's why I killed it. All right. So choose your barriers to entry uh, wisely, I would have to say. And, uh, but you don't want to choose something that's too competitive or too, has too many barriers. You don't want to choose something that has too many barriers because then it's going to be really hard uh, and you might not actually do it. So find somewhere that you know, find somewhere that you think is right. So if you would choose somewhere with no barriers to entry, you better have really good competitive advantages. So there are two sides of the card. All right. There are 
barriers to entry, competitive advantage. You can compete in the world's most competitive markets, but you have to have some edge if you're going to compete in the world's most competitive markets.